happy Easter. Uh, it's the resurrection that we're celebrating today. And today our church is going to be having a service in the church building for the first time since before Christmas. Um, so there we are. It'd be really good. My message today is not particularly about Easter, uh, but I just wanted to mention it to you. We were fully booked for the service on Thursday morning. I had inquiries from people after that asking, have you got any places? I'd say, sorry, we're full up. And my duty today is um, I've delegated everything to Alan uh, uh, so he can lead the whole thing. My duty today will be to stand on the door and turn people away. I didn't want to ask the welcome team to do that because it's not a very nice thing to do. But if people turn up, I've got a few extra seats that are not booked. But if they turn up and there aren't any places, then they'll have to turn them away. Not very nice. It may mean that we'll have two services. Uh, we'll monitor it. It may be that this is due to being the first Sunday back and to being Easter Sunday. <clears throat> that may be part of the reason why there's such a rush to book. Um, and it, it may not carry on, but we'll just see over the next week or two. If it does, we may go to two services on a Sunday morning, which feels very exciting. But we'll be very demanding of everybody involved. So anyway, look, uh, <clears throat> here's a challenge. Uh, Judges 18 verse 24 so the situation is that uh, this guy micah had uh, stolen some 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 money from uh, his mum and he in a fit of conscience he returns it so she she makes an idol back in chapter 17 uh, she makes an idol and she says i'm going to give this back to you uh, micah and he sets up his own uh, little shrine uh, and uh, originally he has his son as his priest and then he gets his young Levite to be his priest. But then some Danites come along and they, they nick his idol and persuade the the priest to go with them because uh, they say, isn't it better that you're a priest in charge of a whole bunch of people than just this one family? And he says, yeah, because he probably thinks he'd get more money for it. It's a very mercenary religion at this time. And... Um, Micah comes out after the Danites and he says this, You took the gods I made and my priests and went away. What else do I have? What else do I have? If we worship anything other than God, it can be taken away. No matter how bad things get in life, with God, you still have God. And life can get pretty bad at times. But with God, you always have God. You cannot have that taken away from you. But if we put anything else in the place of God, it can be taken away. We can lose it. And then he says, what else do I have? It's interesting preaching in a multicultural church because um, we're always trying to update our application. So we say things like, if you put anything else in the place of God, that's your idol. If you absolutize any aspect of creation, this is the analysis in Romans chapter 1. If you take any aspect of the creation and worship it in the place of the creator, then you're an idol. You're an idolater. Now, worship, people may say in this culture, Western culture, we don't worship anything. But we do absolutize. We make something so important that it takes first place in our lives. That's the determining factor in our experience. And that then is our idol. That then is our God, the ultimate concern, as Paul Tillich put it. And we can elevate anything into that position. Um, it could be our career. It could be material possessions. It could be a relationship and these may not be bad things. They can lead us into sin, um, but they themselves don't appear to be sin. But they can lead us to make choices which lead us into sin. And that's because they become idols. They become the most important thing in our life. In a multicultural church, of course, I always have to remember that if I talk like that, there are actually people 
from cultures where people actually do worship statues, fetishes. And so I always have to keep the two things in mind, the kind of uh, figurative application into Western society and the actual literal application into a more traditional, uh, religious, uh, traditionally religious society. But if we take anything and make it into the center of our existence that we determine our being, we determine our worth, our value, our success levels by it, then it becomes an idol. And we can lose it or it can be taken away. And then he says, what else do I have? Nothing. But with God, with Christ, on this Easter Sunday, we know that there is life on the other side of death. We know that Christ rose from the dead. See, this is an Easter message. I just thought of that as I was going along. As you know, I just share what's in my Bible reading for the day. So I don't always have a, uh, a fully worked out message in my head when I begin speaking. Just a germ of a thought. But when you think about it, with Christ, even when everything's gone, there's still Christ. Because he's risen from the dead. And nothing, no body can take that away from you. Father, thank you that in Christ we have something and somebody that we cannot lose because he does not let go of us. Amen. Happy Easter. God bless you.